Okay, and welcome back, students who are taking math for business and finance and math applications. Um, we're starting, well, this here, of course, is a new chapter, chapter 17 on depreciation. And anybody who <laughs> made it through chapter 16, yeah, a little bit dense, um, took a long time. But chapter 17 is, in comparison, is going to be relatively uh, simple. Really, there's only, in this chapter, there's only four concepts that you're you kind of need to get down and I mean it is math intensive in other words you have to be doing a lot of math um, in order to be able to create schedules but for the most part um, it's not this chapter isn't too bad so um, there's obviously going to be um, you know quite a few videos uh, you know at least four covering the additional concepts and of course um, I'm gonna go over uh, this overview which is what's on our next slide so the overview will be in one video, and then as we cover concepts, uh, there'll be additional videos, and depending upon how many it takes for me to discuss each concept, that will determine how many videos as far as the theory is concerned. Okay, so uh, let's talk about uh, this as an overview. All right. Now, when it comes to depreciation, all right, first let's talk about what depreciation is. All right. When we buy uh, let's say a car, uh, because that's the easiest to uh, an easy example. Uh, my pen seems to be giving me a difficult time lately. Maybe I need to clean the clean it or something. But anyway, um, when we when we buy a car, all right, um, we uh, put it on our books. I mean, we're, I'm talking about for business. Okay, um, we put it on our books. At that value. So if I have a forty thousand, I buy a forty thousand dollar car. I put it on my books as an asset because uh, an automobile is something we own. All right, things that we own are assets. But obviously, as we use the car over time, okay. So over the course of time, we use the car, and the value of that car goes down. It depreciates. Okay. Now the question you know, uh, becomes, how do we depreciate it? All right. So there's different methods to do that. Now, that's and this is what this chapter is uh, beginning to start about. So, you know, pay attention to these uh, uh, these methods. Even though there's more methods than what you see in this in the this textbook for math for business and finance things like as you can see straight line units of production and declining balance and even makers you'll see in other subjects like financial accounting intermediate accounting okay um, so you know what you have here yeah you'll see it again so kind of get it down now um, so that when you see it in another subject it'll, you know you'll already have a, a leg up on uh, being able to do the work in those additional subjects now when it comes to depreciation you'll see that I have here um, it says business and which are the financials and it says for tax purposes okay um, when you create your financial statements for a business what you're trying to do is your you're able to you need to show the depreciation because obviously you know there's a loss of value but you have your choice as to what method you want to use uh, in order to be able to show the uh, show your financial statements in, in its best light this uh, chapter right will discusses uh, these three methods and again there's more than these three but it discusses straight line which is really the easiest to understand and, and actually do units of production and then something called declining balance or it's also known as double declining balance um, because we're act, we're using a factor of two all right um, so if you if you're in a discussion and you're talking about and I realize that you don't know the concept just yet but you can you can use a factor of like 1.25 or 1.5 or 2 well if you you know and you could use any other I mean it could be 1.67 okay I mean there's no steadfast rule but if you're using anything other than a factor of 2 
uh, you kind of talk about it in terms of a declining balance. But if you uh, use a factor of two, and then you speak in terms of double declining balance, and people who understand the concept know that you know the factor is doubled. That's why it's two. Okay. Now, for the as I said, for the business purposes, it's up to you to decide which uh, method you want to use to show your financial statements in the best light. So let's say I buy a, a car, all right, and this is car number one. I can choose to use straight line, right? It, um, but when I buy car number two, I don't have to use straight line for car number two. I can use, say, units of production for car number two. Okay, um, you know, so you can use different, you know, each and every asset. You determine how you're going to depreciate it for that particular asset, because once you set that in, once you um, make the decision as to how you're going to depreciate it. You're, you're kind of like stuck with it, all right? Um, if you get into intermediate accounting, you'll learn how to, uh, if you absolutely must change the depreciation method, uh, you'll learn how to do that in intermediate accounting too, but that happens very, very, very rarely, okay? Um, so when you f buy an asset, you really kind of say to yourself, okay, which method am I going to use? And that's the one you're, you're you know, you're stuck with. So um, if I buy a third car, and let's say I, I decide to do a double declining balance, right, on that one, I mean, that's fine, right? Um, and then for my fourth one, I can go back to straight line if I wanted, or I could units of production, you know, it doesn't matter because you're looking at each individual asset in and of itself, okay? You're not looking at looking at them as a whole. And by the way, for business, you can also use makers, you know, for your uh, depreciation when you're looking at your financials, right? Um, but most often, that's not what you're going uh, you're going to do. I mean, if you have a really really small business, okay, where your financial information is not going to leave the company, and you know, then you might say, well, I have to do makers for tax purposes so why don't I just use it for my financials since nobody is going to look at the uh, uh, the my financial statements anyway and it's only for my use all right so um, you can use the makers for uh, the business financials however when it comes to doing your taxes you have to use makers the modified cost recovery system Okay, you don't have a choice. You can't choose any of these or any uh, any other ones that are available that you're not learning in this book. All right, um, you you have to use the maker system. Okay, so when you think about it, here's business. I can use four, you know, these four methods. All right, but when it comes to taxes, I can only use the one method. Okay, and as we cover the methods in future videos. Um, you'll you know you'll get a better understanding of that because I'll touch up upon it okay now uh, I do have to cover terminology um, there's a certain basic terminology when it comes to depreciation right and I'm going to define this terminology but I'm not going to use these as I'm not going to make create examples to explain the terminology um, I had already made another video and I trashed it because I had gone and started out trying to show examples and when you get into that perspective now all of a sudden the video was a half an hour long and I didn't even get to where I wanted to begin okay so I'm just gonna explain the terminology here and then you'll see the application of this terminology as it applies to whichever method you're looking at all right so um, let's just say we're buying a car okay and we want to know the purchase price is what you're purchasing the car for. So if I buy the car for $40,000, okay, that's my purchase price. Now, and, and that's easy to understand. You know, it's what you pay for the pay for the asset. Now, salvage value is, and the, and this is where you know things get a little sticky here, okay? Because with a car. Most often, you're going to um, you're going to depreciate the car over the course of time, 
and in most uh, instances you're going to choose four years. That four years is your useful life. Now, we all know that when you know that that car, you know, you, you buy it today, and it doesn't mean that at the end of four years your car stops running. Okay, you know, you might you might run that car for ten years, fifteen years. Okay, so you have to decide what the useful life will be as far as depreciation is concerned, and you can choose three years. You can choose four years. You can choose five years. Okay, you know it, it's all up to you. There is no one set standard when you are looking at um, from the business perspective and financials. With a tax perspective, the maker system tells you it dictates how many years. Okay. So, and you'll see that when I cover the those methods. So. We're sitting here and we're saying, okay, we're going to depreciate for um, a certain number of years, okay? And even though we'll use the car for longer than those years, right? Whichever number of years we decide upon, right? At that time, we have to determine what our salvage value will be, okay? I can say my salvage value is zero, which means I depreciate the entire 40,000 if I if I'm using four years here I'm depreciating the full forty thousand dollars over four years so that my accumulated you know, look at this boy oh boy can't write for anything here accumulated can't spell my accumulated depreciation um, is the total of the uh, the whole forty thousand? Now remember, accumulated means you know uh, you know just what you keep adding to it. So if I have forty years, uh, you know during and if I was using something like straight line, and like I said, I'm not going to get into methods here. But in that first year, I might uh, depreciate ten thousand dollars, and then the second year, I might depreciate ten thousand dollars. Okay, so now I have twenty thousand dollars of accumulated depreciation and the third year oops I'm sorry third year I uh, depreciate ten thousand dollars more so now I'm at thirty thousand dollars of accumulated depreciation and then then my last year I depreciate ten thousand dollars more so I've depreciated it a, a, you know my accumulated depreciation is a complete forty thousand dollars which means the value of that automobile for depreciation purposes is zero okay now that doesn't necessarily you know um, my salvage value okay doesn't have to be zero okay um, I could say that uh, let me erase this and quickly get a, a, a good number here. And let me just think about this. Um, all right, let's say um, at the end of four years, I think I want the value of my automobile to be eight thousand dollars. Okay, that's my salvage value. Meaning, when I depreciate over the four years, my automobile that car still has a value of eight thousand dollars so in the first year I'm going to uh, depreciate eight thousand okay um, in my second year I'm going to depreciate eight thousand so now I have an accumulated depreciation of sixteen thousand in my third year I depreciate eight thousand so that means now I have uh, twenty four thousand of accumulated depreciation and in my last year, I depreciate eight more thousand, which means I have thirty-two thousand dollars of accumulated depreciation. Well, if my car started out at forty thousand, and I have thirty-two thousand dollars of accumulated depreciation, my salvage value is the eight thousand dollars. Okay. Um, and what I also just did was was I showed you what uh, the book value is. Okay. The book value is nothing more than taking the purchase price 
less the accumulated depreciation. Okay, so in year one, if I depreciate eight thousand dollars, what I'm doing is I'm taking the forty thousand less the eight, and that means my book value is thirty-two thousand. That's the value of that car on my books, book value. Okay, in the next year, if I depreciate eight thousand dollars more, remember eight and eight is sixteen as 16,000 for accumulate depreciation, but my book value becomes 24,000. Why? 40,000 less 16,000 is 24,000. That's my book value, okay? And so on and so forth. In my third year, my accumulated depreciation is, um, is now 24,000, okay? But my book value becomes 16,000 because 40,000 less my 24,000 is 16,000. And then of course, when I depreciate the last year, my accumulated depreciation is now, um, uh, 32,000 and 32,000 from 40,000 is, you know, 8,000, which is my salvage value. Okay. All right. So that kind of like covers that. All right. Um, but, and realize that, um, that I'm just trying to present the terminology here. And like I said, I didn't, you know, I can make this, this video was a half an hour long and I didn't even get to where I needed to be um, because I was showing examples and trying to go through all of this and that when you're actually going to see these again in the, uh, these ideas in the uh, upcoming videos on the, on the different methods. Okay. And units um, is kind of um relates to units of production, meaning if I have this car, okay, you know, we have to determine um, units uh, in order to be able to count units being a usage uh, of something in order to be able to determine units of production, meaning, well, I can, well, you know, for an automobile, I could use miles as a units of production. If I had, say, a printing press, I can have the number of newspapers, okay, as the uh, units of production. Meaning, I'm looking at this car and I'm thinking that this car is going to have a useful life of 150,000 miles. Well, each one of those miles is a unit, okay. With my printing press, you know, I figure I can print out 1 million newspapers, right. Well, each one of those newspapers is a unit. So certain assets lend themselves uh, a little bit better to units of production, whereas something like a computer doesn't, right? I mean, it you know it doesn't really produce anything and it doesn't use incrementally, okay? So with a computer, I could probably use straight line and I could use declining balance, but I wouldn't be able to use units of production. Whereas with a car, okay, I could use a straight line depreciation, I could use units of production, I could use declining balance, okay? But like I said, um, you know, some assets don't lend themselves to units of production or units. And then lastly here, as far as terminology is concerned, and we're already at 19 minutes. <laughs> it's just the way nature of the beast. Maybe I should have divided this into two videos um, is factor. Okay. Now that this one has to do with makers in that. Um, and we'll cover this when we uh, do the makers method. But you're going to cross-reference a couple of tables and to come up with a factor in order to be able to determine how much you're going to depreciate. And, it's just, and we also use it in declining balance. If I had a, uh, a factor of 1.25 or 1 1.5, you know, I'm using that factor in order to determine what my declining balance, my declining book value is. Okay. Um, so that's what a factor is, and, and you'll see what I mean by that when we get to, uh, like I said, declining balance and makers. All right, so with that, I'm done and with this here overview video, and I will see you all in the uh, next video, which will start covering straight-line depreciation.